Hi. Good evening. Hi, I'm Keith Murphy. Welcome to the uh, second concert of the Northern Roots Festival. Uh, as always here at the festival, we have a beautiful um, selection of music, a great range of traditional music tonight, just some exquisite players, and it's, uh, it's really exciting. But um, we also have to start on a sad note, unfortunately, because we lost today. <clears throat> Um, someone who was a big part of our music community, Tony Barron, passed away this morning. And, um, you know, Tony's been struggling with health issues for, for a long, long time, notably um, MS. And he was an indomitable spirit through many, many of those years. And he, as many of you know, he toured for decades with his singing partner, John Roberts, and as part of his quartet, Noel Sing Me Clear, that was the sound of Christmas for many of us. And Tony was a huge supporter of the Northern Roots Festival. Um, he sang for us many times, and he was a big part of the local singing scene, a big part of the pub sing that became a really thriving tradition. And so we're deeply grateful for, for all that Tony brought to us over the years. Tony, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Tony was a great singer, but I can never think of Tony's voice on its own because Tony was above all else a performer. He really just thrived on the stage. He was somebody who came alive on the stage. And I knew, as I said, he really appreciated uh, the kind of music that we did here at the festival. So, uh, and you know, and when we lose anybody, it's just one of those reminders to kind of um, enjoy and embrace every moment that we have. <clears throat> so. With that in mind, let's, uh, let's savor all that we, that we have tonight. All right, so we're gonna start with a couple of friends from Montpelier, East Montpelier. They were here as part of the very first Northern Roots Festival. Uh, this is our 15th year, and so it, it's just great to have Benedict and Hillary back with us. Uh, we started off, the festival was sort of a different format, sort of a smaller scale. Um, but these guys helped set a, an amazing tone for us right in that first year. And so it's just a delight to have them back again. Um, they're leaders in the traditional music scene, certainly in, in the Montpelier area, where I would say these guys, they're just truly what we call tradition bearers. They're just so profoundly dedicated to great uh, Irish music. And so um, we're delighted to have them here as Benedict. Benedict is right there. So please make welcome <laughs> Benedict and Hillary. Okay. Wow, it's so great to be back, even this way. <laughs>
Thanks very much for that. Now, um, thank you all for uh, braving the various hazards and dangers to, to get here tonight. Um, it looked pretty silly sitting up here and playing for an empty room, so uh, great, great to have you. So those were, uh, those were a couple of hornpipes, uh, both very much associated with County Clare. The first is uh, called Scully Casey's, and the second is Lawson's. And um, hornpipes are, I would say, the um, most irrepressibly cheerful tunes in, in Irish music. Even the sad ones are cheerful. So um, if you're feeling down, if you've been feeling a little low and um, maybe a bit uh, anxious and perhaps a trifle isolated, uh, things like, you know, if you feel like you've forgotten how to talk to people, um, you're bored and irritable and maybe your worldview is tending towards um, the negative. Um, I, 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 I mean, anybody been feeling that way <laughs> in the last couple of years? Show of hands, please. I'm just asking for a friend. What you need to do is sit yourself down and play a couple of hornpipes, and everything will feel better. Um, anyway, the uh, next thing we're going to do is much less cheerful. Um, <laughs> so, get ready. Uh, so if you, if you looked at, oh, I'd say some 600 years of Irish history uh, culminating in what was called the Acts of Union in 1800, which uh, brought Ireland into the, um, the, um, the Commonwealth of Britain, whether or not Ireland wanted to be there, um, what you're looking at is kind of a slow motion um, process of uh, the erosion of um, uh, the demolition, I guess, uh, of an ancient um, system of Irish society, uh, which depended on um, a, a hereditary aristocracy um, and the power and the patronage which they exercised. And if you wanted to pin a spot on that timeline that kind of marked the beginning of the end for the old order, it would probably be uh, a spot of unpleasantness known as the Battle of Kinsale, uh, which occurred in um, 1603, I think, um, as a result of which a fair chunk of that um, old order aristocracy <laughs> had to get on board the first ship they possibly could commandeer immediately after the battle, and they headed off to France, leaving their lands and their families behind. Um, it's uh, an occasion referred to as the flight of the earls, or more poetically, the flight of the wild geese. Mm -hmm. And the only good thing to come out of the Battle of Kinsale was a um, wonderful piece of harp music, which uh, Hillary is going to <coughs> describe for you. You will sort of play the parts. Um, so the, this um, this piece comes in three parts. The first part more or less tells the story. The second part is the sound of the soldiers, the defeated soldiers limping off the battlefield. And this is the part. And then the third part are the soldiers calling to their wives from their boat, sailing to France. And it's a kind of call and response. The soldiers call to their wives, and the wives answer back across the water. So I think that explains it, but that'll give you a sense of what, this, this, what you're going to hear.
Okay, so as long as we're um, way back in the past, um, we'll just play a tune by Turla O'Carolyn, um, great blind Irish harper. Almost everyone, I'm sure, here knows who that is. Um, it was one of the lovely things about um, seeing his tombstone, where it said, um, in memory of Turla O'Carolyn, our great solace in our great need. But this is a cheerful tune. <laughs> it's called Thomas Burke. going to finish with a, a few reels here um, and uh, I just wanted to thank um, the Brattleboro Music Center and everyone involved with it uh, for making this thing possible. Um, just uh, met Carol for the first time this evening and she is utterly a force of nature. Um, We also want to thank, of course, Keith and Becky for being the inspiration for this, uh, for this festival. Okay, so we'll end up, um, we'll end up with um, a few reels. I'm going to, we'll start with a reel that's called the Farewell Reel. And we heard from Mick Maloney that during American wakes in Ireland, these are parties that were held when people were emigrating to America and a lot of times their families never knew whether they'd see them again. So they would hold a wake and it was called an American wake. And um, according to Mick Maloney, they would play a reel called the farewell reel and they play it very slowly and mournfully. So we'll start out that way and then and then not do that. <laughs> Again, thanks to everybody for coming.
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in all these traditions in Irish music and Scottish and French Canadian, there's often like a lot of sort of sub genres or sub repertoires, and you don't get a lot of people playing that kind of repertoire that, that those guys play and do it so beautifully. Um, and as I said, you know, uh, Benedict and Hillary, they do amazing work uh, in East Montpelier as leaders of that community, as teachers and just and session leaders fostering a scene there, as do uh, the Vox Hunters in, in Rhode Island. These guys are amazing musicians, but they've also put a huge amount of energy into their own community, leading tune sessions and a lot of, a lot of song sessions. Ben and Armand have come to the Northern Roots Festival before. They performed either together or, or separately. Uh, and even when we don't hire them, they just keep coming back. Um, You'll never keep us away. Uh, and um, you know, we're so lucky to always see them because, because they do do all these things. They have, they're great instrumentalists. They were part of the great Irish jam session this afternoon. Amazing singers. And they've done some really great work looking into traditional music from the, the area where they live around Rhode Island. So please make welcome Ben and Armand, the Vox Hunters. All right. Oh, yeah. Sing now, talk later. Each morning when the dawn returns and the hills and trees and fields and ferns are grateful in the gaining light he rises from the dead of night he rises from the dead of night he rises from the dead of night he rakes the star coals up the sky until the flames burn bright and high and every cloud that eastward is is reddened by that fire of his is reddened by that fire of his is reddened by that fire of his at evening when the day is done and comes an end of play and fun. Oh, the old fire tender lifts his rake. Then he gives the sky a mighty shake. He gives the sky a mighty shake. He gives the sky a mighty shake. And down the west the star coals roll to scatter in the western bowl and the old fire tender watches the reflection spread <laughs> <laughs> then he banks the fire and goes to bed he banks the fire then goes to bed he banks the fire then goes to bed each morning when the dawn returns and the hills and trees and fields and ferns are grateful in the gaining light. He rises from the dead of night. 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 Thank you. We feel so vulnerable and under lights with people in front of us. It's, it feels like it's been a long time. Um, that, that song is technically, we consider a Rhode Island song because it comes from a, a book of children's poetry that I found in a bookstore in Providence. <laughs> and Armin set the music to it. <laughs> it's actually doubly Rhode Island. Yeah. yeah but, uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the name of the poet at the moment, but uh, he was local to New England. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, as Keith had mentioned before, uh, we've performed here in uh, various configurations, and the first time I had ever played here was uh, as a duo uh, with Dan Restivo, who, uh, Dan. yeah, Dan Restivo, <laughs> he's in Ireland, and we miss him so. Um, 
And that was uh, ten years ago, or something like that. Yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so these are two tunes that I played with him that time. <laughs> that was more than at least five years ago. And if you play Irish music, you'll recognize the second tune, but maybe not in the way that we're going to play it. And it's the way Dan ferociously insisted it must be played, and we do agree. <laughs> so this is for Dan or Steven. <laughs> opinions about what you've just heard. <laughs> that ending is very traditional. <laughs> as is everything we do. It's pure tradition. We're making it up as we go, and that's part of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the tradition, it moves with the weather. As it will. Yes, indeed. So uh, we had a set in mind, and then we drove up from Providence, and we changed the set. So this is a song we didn't intend to do, because we sang the whole way, and we realize there's a lot of stuff that we actually have learned and never sung for people yet and have already forgotten about. <laughs> and in this case, written. Yes. Yeah. Shh. Uh, <laughs> so this is a song that kind of uh, is about the things that don't get the spotlight uh, in folk songs often or the kindly spotlight. There's a lot of uh, stigmas and stereotypes that we unfortunately pass down generation to generation. and. As we learn them, we can get rid of them, and we can all live better lives. Take note. And it has a chorus, so please sing along. I'm just a simple earwig. Why do you all fear me? I lead the simple earwig's life. Look close and you will see. Look close and you will see. I am a lady earwig. The males all vie for me and clash their forked abdomens, my suitor for to be. And when I am a mother, I'll weather nature's strife. I'll lay a precious clutch of eggs and guard them with my life. 
and guard them with my life. I'm just a simple earwig. Why do you all fear me? I lead the simple earwig's life. Look close and you will see. Look close and you will see. The people, they are wicked. Such lies they do ingrain. They say I am an evil bug that burrows in your brain. But why ever would I do that? There's nothing there for me. And I'd scorn to raise my little ones mid such animosity. Such animosity. I'm just a simple earwig. Why do you all fear me? I lead the simple earwig's life. Look close and you will see. Look close and you will see. I am a winged insect. But my wings you'll never see, though they rival any other kind in sheer complexity. I keep my brilliance tucked away, so I alone will know that I have the choice to fly above as through the dirt I go. As through the dirt I go, I'm just a simple earwig. Why do you all fear me? I lead the simple earwig's life. Look close and you will see. Look close and you will see. You humans reek of privilege. You take but seldom give. You scorn the earth's custodians and mock the ways we live. But go and tell your stories. Allege my evil powers. I'm just a simple earwig among the milkweed flowers. Among the milkweed flowers. I'm just a simple earwig. My, do you all fear me? I lead the simple earwig's life. Look close and you will see. Look close and you will see. <laughs> Continue our smorgasbord of wonders <laughs> onto some more, uh, another dedicated tune. Yes, uh, so a couple jigs. Uh, the first one is uh, from my late fiddle teacher, Jimmy Devine, who uh, passed away fairly recently, over the summer, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is one of his tunes. It's a jig called The Palisades which he described as the Cliffs of Moher of New Jersey. <laughs> um, and it's, it's one of my favorite tunes. It's just so good. And it's, it very much is Jimmy Devine when you hear it, uh, if, if you know him. Um, and the next one is a Filipino tune called Suble, and uh, it comes from the uh, Tagalog region of the Philippines. And it happens to work really well. <laughs> You're probably going to want to learn this if you play any sort of instrument. It's a really fun <laughs> tune. I'm actually going to sit for this one. This is heavy. <laughs> Alrighty, so the Palisades and Souble. Play the first couple notes of the second. Oh. Thank you. <laughs>
we have uh, one more for you. And thanks again to uh, everyone here and, and all the ways that you've helped make this possible. Um, I, I won't repeat uh, the wonderful thanks that were given by Benedict and Hillary. I will just echo that. Um, so this last song is kind of one of those, uh, it, it feels so poignant to situations like this where things are getting better, but we still have a little bit of time to wait, and we can do it. <laughs> uh, this is, does not come from a northern source. It comes from a man named Uncle Charlie Osborne in Virginia, I think. He's an Appalachian singer. Let's assume the north of Virginia. Oh, make, the, make the theme hold true. <laughs> Right. <laughs> As we travel through the desert, storms beset us by the way. But beyond these trials before us lies a field of endless day. Farther on, still go farther. Count the milestones one by one. Love, I will forsake you never. It is better farther on. I will never think of earwigs the same way. So um, we have an act bringing two instruments that have never uh, been shown before here at the Northern Roots Festival, so that's pretty exciting. Two more sort of somewhat uh, um, un unusual instruments, the hurdy-gurdy uh, on the left from France and the Welsh Cruth. Uh, and uh, you'll have lots of questions and you'll get some information about them. Instruments, you know, that you don't often see in bands, they're kind of, you know, instruments you see on their own. Uh, Emerald and Dan, they, they met at a musical singles bar. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Um, 
but they were very excited that the French hurdy-gurdy and the Welsh truth um, were com sim simpatico, were compatible, and we're delighted to have them here at the Northern Roots Festival. Thanks, guys. Emerald and Dan. as the Cruth in Wales. Um, Cruth is spelled C-R-W-T-H, naturally. And <laughs> I'm playing this because Keith really thought that Northern Roots could, could use some Cruth. So here I am. <laughs> and the Cruth is um, a really ancient instrument. It actually dates back to the 11th century. And so I have recently started playing with Dan, who plays the hurdy-gurdy, which also dates back to the 11th century. So we get to be very out of date together. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a weird thing to do. And people always ask me, like, why, why? Um, because I usually play the fiddle. And this is, this is sort of the ancient fiddle. That's the short answer. Um, but yeah, this is a, a very storied and very interesting um, instrument that was played by bards back in the day. So we are been, we've been playing um, some French tunes, and we're going to continue on with some French tunes, but I thought I'd kind of talk about the instruments a little bit. This is actually um, not a violin. As you can see, it's actually a bowed lyre, and it has six strings, which you can see here, and it has two strings that are off of the side, which just ring um, like drone strings. And it's the only, only instrument that comes with its own noose, as far as I know. 
Would you like to tell them something about the Hurdy Gurdy? Well, one of the reasons that we play so well together is we are, are part of, you know, the uh, the C minor society. We we share a tuning, and that's what makes us uh, natural allies in whatever form that we are. Um, anyway, the hurdy-gurdy is also an 11th century instrument, or at least the first ones are, and it is um, originally Central French, or at least that's where the first ones were, were, were noted, and there's a large, large repertoire out of Central France, and there's a whole diaspora of instruments that have traveled all over uh, Europe. It is also completely backwards from most other instruments in the fact that it's very much like a violin, except instead of having a bow, it has a wheel. And instead of having hair on the bow, you actually wrap hair around the strings and rosin the wheel in order to make the sound. However, instead of going and doing something normal, like actually having a fingerboard, um, what you have is you have a keyboard, except the keyboard moves tangents up into the strings, kind of like a fretboard, except you're moving the frets instead of moving the strings. <laughs> the 11th century, uh, 11th century was apparently very long. <laughs> um, because it's done some very, very strange things. And meanwhile, we're gonna play a set of borets for you. And one of them has been folk processed by me. The other one is called La Forge. And the other one is called the one that comes after La Forge because it is the one my fingers told me to play this morning.
thank you so much. Um, well, we're going to finish up um, in the British Isles. Um, I'm going to play you a Welsh tune, finally. This is a, was known last as, as a Welsh instrument because that's where it ended up. Um, the last known uh, Cruth player from the bard tradition died in 1805. And then there was me. Just kidding. No. <laughs> there isn't just me. Um, but it kind of feels like that sometimes. Um, and so we're going to play a Welsh tune called Drubach, which means um, the little wren. And then we're going to go into an English tune um, uh, called Shepherd's Hay, which some of you might recognize. And um, so this, this instrument was played in um, Scotland and Ireland as well. It was known as the crute. And it was played in England, also it was known as the crowd, or the crowd. So if you know anybody that's called Crowder, or Crowther, or Crothers, or something like that, they come from cruise playing people. So that's that story. Do you have any more hurdy-curdy stories before we play our last tune? Well, the only thing that I wanted to mention is you may have heard um, a buzzing that was happening here. That was not an accident. Um, there, is, there is actually a small bridge on the top of the, the hurdy-gurdy here called the, um, the Xian. And what it is is, um, okay, there's a colloquial description of the hurdy-gurdy that the hurdy-gurdy is half violin, half bagpipe, and half kazoo. <laughs> this is the kazoo portion. And what it does... And what it does is it allows you to add your own rhythm by going and, and by putting a little bit of emphasis on, on certain beats by changing the way, speed of which you um, turn the manifest. Oh, and now it's not going to work. Thanks. <laughs> oh, God. We've been Please. saying Janu January is not these, uh, these uh, instruments season. <laughs> Fine, just forget I said that, okay? <laughs> it thinks it's funny. It really does. It knows it knows you're watching. <laughs> Never mind. Forget I said anything about this. We're gonna go on some dirt. You wanna find the out about is shy. After, after we've talked. <laughs> you're you'll hear it in a minute. It gets shy. Um, so we won't scare it right now. Um, but anyway, this is going to be our last tune, and we did, wanted to just say a huge thank you to all of the wonderful musicians that have played tonight and that played last night also, and thank you so much to Keith and Becky for putting this on, and thank you so much to Alan and Carol and all of the production staff here. Thank you to everybody at the um, Brattleboro Music Center, and thank you to all of you for coming out to hear us play some music. This is so great. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, great, we'll play some more tunes and then on, the, on with the show. There we go. Hmm. Did it do it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs>
All right, Dan and Emerald. All right, we're going to round, some, round things up here with uh, some French-Canadian music, a little blast from north of the border. And we're very lucky to have Eric Boudman here, a Montreal native. The only bad thing about Eric being here is the fact that he's substituting for Becky Tracy, who was going to play before she broke her wrist while skating on Spofford Lake. So that was unfortunate. So instead of playing the fiddle, we have Becky on keyboard tonight, the laptop keyboard. Uh, overseeing the live stream. She's back there as part of our IT uh, section. Becky Tracy. We also have Rachel Bell help, helping out over there. We have Ray Siebold manning the cameras and our live for our live stream. And Alan Stockwell back there, back there at the board. Uh, so we have Eric playing, as I say, in, 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 uh, in Becky's place. Uh, we have Jan Falquet here also. Jan played last night. I introduced Jan then. I did exaggerate some things about Jan last night, and I was called out about it. I said that uh, he was from Westminster West. He's only from Westminster. <laughs> so just to be really clear about that, because there was a lot, of, a lot of backlash. Anyway, so, um, so we're going to play some French-Canadian tunes for you, and I'm just going to get set up here. So.
Green light? Green, 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 green. It was a tune by, oh yes, by the great Alfred Montmarquette, fantastic accordion player. He played, I believe, in the 20s and 30s, in the 40s around in Montreal in uh, Parc La Fontaine, that, a park that had a lot of marching bands and playing all kind of music from the, often from, from down in the US. And he was very influenced by these, uh, these sounds and maybe perhaps a calliope around that he could, could inspire him with these tunes. And we started with uh, three tunes from the great composer uh, Réjean Lisotte, a great tradition bearer up in Quebec. And now we'll uh, feature Keith uh, on the mandolin to start. Uh, La Cardeuse, followed by La Gigue à Monsieur La Santé. Thank you. We have one more, but um, I think it's a, 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 one other opportunity to uh, show our appreciation to the great guy there, organizer um, of festival and, and coordinator of things, a good friend Keith Murphy. Just arrived in this 
part of the world pretty recently and he was uh, he, him and Becky were, were really good um, to make me feel welcome in the area they made me scone uh, <laughs> and they took me to see James Bond at the Latches Theater <laughs> uh, many good things so thanks to, to both of them and also I'm really honored to play with my good friend Eric Bunman at the beginning of the pandemic I did not live here I live in Somerville Mass and both of us were uh, kind of isolated in our apartment and we managed to find a place underneath the highway uh, interchange in S Somerville next to a car dealer and we could play about seven meters away with masks and we played tunes and that's where I learned the next tune, a tune that Eric had just written maybe or written a long time ago. A few years ago. A few years ago and also where he learned the next one which is one of mine and we'll finish the set with a big Quebecois reel called Le Forge. Thanks so much, all of you, for coming, for making this possible. We can't say her name enough. Carol, she is amazing. She makes everything happen. So merci beaucoup. And uh, that's it.
Call all hands to man the capstan. See the cables are running clear. Heave away and with a will, boys. For New England we will steer. Sing it out. Rolling home. Rolling home, rolling home across the sea. Rolling home to old New England. Rolling home, dear land to me. To the friends we leave behind us, we must be the fond of dear. To the times we spent together, to the time we spent with you. Rolling home, rolling home, rolling home across the sea. Rolling home to old New England. Rolling Sails are full of snow. Clear your sheets, sway your halyards, stay around and let her go. <laughs> rolling home, rolling home, rolling home across the sea. Rolling We'll sight the shore of old New England when the dawn brings in the light. Rolling home, rolling home, rolling home across the sea. Rolling home to old New England. One more. Rolling home. Thank you.